Greetings. Uh, let us learn about APC, otherwise known as organ plasma coagulation. Uh, this is a monopolar electrocoagulation and it is a non contact thermocoagulation therapy. Uh, Non-contact because the organ gas forms the plasma that allows the electrical current to go along the gas and create coagulation. So let us see the setup here. Here we're performing an organ plasma coagulation and uh, how do we uh, set up and what is involved in organ plasma coagulation. First thing is you need an electrosurgical generator. The generator creates the current flow uh, along with uh, organ plasma gas as well. So unlike the monopolar current used for snare, it is just this current that is causing the coagulation with organ plasma coagulation, there are two components, the organ gas and monopolar electrosurgical current circuit. So the electrosurgical generator allows the delivery of both the gas and the current. And the gas and the current goes through a catheter that we insert into the endoscope to the field where we deliver the gas and the current. And being a monopolar uh, type of uh, electrosurgical circuit that is involved, the patient needs a returning electrode back to the electrosurgical generator to complete the circuit. So let us learn about how do you set up the APC system. So you power it on and you select the program. Uh, usually the programs are set right colon, stomach, rectum, esophagus. And if you want to set up your own parameters, you can also create a uh, custom made uh, program as well. Uh, you press and select the program and we selected APC right colon and then you hook the APC catheter and then engage the program and when you engage the program the button uh, turns into that uh, blue gets highlighted and as you can see the returning electrode goes to the neutral uh, socket and the APC catheter goes to the APC catheter socket. And now we are set and the program is going to deliver forced APC, 0.8 liters flow, 30 watts maximum. You want to check the gas flow, whether the gas flow is set up or not. Uh, one way to check is press the uh, blue pedal and you feel the gas on the tip of the finger and you're set. Uh, in the previous models, people used to use uh, a system to check whether the circuit is complete or not that is uh, part of the machine. Now let us learn about the different parameters for organ plasma coagulation. Uh, here you see forced APC and this delivers gas continuously. It is a continuous uninterrupted stream of organ gas when you use forced APC. And uh, this is used for destroying a tumor as well as uh, treating bleeding. So two main reasons for using forced APC. You can set the flow uh, anywhere between 0.8 liters, 1 liter, 1.52 I typically set a low flow rate and the wattage could be you know 30 watts here but you can go up to as high as 
70, 80, 90 watts. So we learned about forced APC. Next is we look at pulsed APC. Pulsed APC is where the gas is coming out of the catheter in pulses. Uh, if you select two, effect two, you have more frequent pulses. If you select effect one, uh, infrequent pulses. So the way you want, if you want to have fast pulse, you need to select uh, effect two. And pulsed APC is also used to destroy tumor because once you press on the blue pedal, it will deliver APC buzz, 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 buzz. And uh, that will help us to ablate large areas of the tumor, like in Barrett's ablation. And it's also useful for treating large areas of bleeding. Uh, for example, gastric antral vascular ectasia therapy. So, pulsed AP, forced APC, continuous stream of uh, organ gas, pulsed APC, interrupted flow of gas, whether the interruptions are uh, smaller interruptions or longer interruptions of gas flow, that is effect one and effect two. And then precise APC is a very uh, uh, interesting mode where the machine automatically adjusts the power uh, depending upon where your catheter is in terms of the its relationship to the mucosa. And say for example, there's a respiratory movement and your catheter is moving, uh, is not able to maintain a constant distance of one to two millimeters away from the lesion. The precise APC will adjust the power and increase the power and able to deliver uh, the thermal effect. So when you're struggling and uh, you're not able to maintain the distance close to the target lesion and you want to use a, a setting, then you should pick up precise APC setting. So we talked about the electrosurgical generator. We talked about the different uh, delivery modes of APC. And now let us look at APC catheter. So APC catheters come in different uh, lengths and uh, they can be 220 centimeters or 440 centimeters. Two different lengths available and uh, they come in different diameters, either seven French or 10 French. Uh, I prefer to use a 10 French for as a 10 French catheter can go through most of our regular endoscopes and colonoscopes. And when you look at the APC catheter tip, uh, it could be a straight fire or aerial beam, as you can see straight fire here, or you could use a side fire beam or a circumferential uh, fire beam. I, tr I typically use for most of my cases a straight fire beam uh, because that's the practice that uh, I, I prefer. Uh, but if you want, you can try any one of these different modes. As an assistant, it's important to know what instrument you're taking out and what settings you're setting up on the machine. So here, uh, there is a lesion here, we're trying to do the APC, uh, and uh, uh, the assistant should say, Doc, we have set up forced APC, 0.8 liters flow, 30 watts, aerial beam catheter. It's not uncommon for the endoscopy assistant to pick the wrong catheter. Uh, maybe instead of a aerial beam straight forward jet catheter, uh, somebody may keep uh, a side fire catheter also mixed up in those catheters and maybe the endoscopist uh, uh, prefers the straight and you're giving the side fire. And if you open up, uh, maybe you 
may waste uh, a device. So it's very important before you pick the device, you should ask your, your endoscopist what type of device does he need. A straight fire, a circumferential, or side fire. And then you should ask them 10 French or 7 French. And you should also ask them what settings. Is it a forced APC, pulsed APC, or precise APC? And then what flow? And finally, what wattage? So those are all the things that one should uh, have in mind. And here is a forced APC that we're using and then uh, ablating the edge. So coming to the indications for APC, APC can be used for hemostasis. And uh, here are some examples uh, in GAVE. You can apply APC using a pulsed APC for rapid uh, treatment. Uh, you could also use APC for radiation telangiectasia and APC could be used for ablation of the uh, EMR uh, defect to cut down the recurrence. APC can be used to manage uh, Barrett's. Uh, now, APC is not that frequently used uh, for Barrett's management. The radiofrequency ablation has replaced uh, all other thermal modalities. Only recently, APC is uh, trying to gain some traction in this area uh, with a new technique called uh, that involves injection of fluid under the barrels and then applying the APC. Uh, APC can be used to uh, ablate a tumor, uh, that is either to control bleeding or to open up the lumen and uh, uh, these are all the different indications for APC. So, so manage bleeding, typically either radiation telangiectasia or gastric antral vascular ectasia, uh, ablation of uh, EMR defects, uh, Barrett's esophagus, and cancer. So we've learned about the indications. Before uh, you go ahead, uh, it's important to learn about the tissue effects of APC in terms of uh, what are all the different parameters that are going to impact the, the damage to the tissue. Uh, one is uh, probe distance. How far do you keep the probe? If you keep the probe very close to the mucosa touching, sometimes the gas can enter the submucosa and create uh, like a pneumatoseal. Uh, so it's important to keep the probe at least one to two millimeters away from the mucosa. The second is uh, power setting, higher power settings, more damage. But the most important thing is the total duration of activation. That is going to impact the amount of damage that APC will cause. How deep will the damage go? So let us learn a little more about this. So here is a setting. We set the APC at 45 watts for one second. That is 45 joules total energy delivered. And uh, this is the amount of damage. Damage just limited to the mucosa and a little bit of submucosa. On the other hand, if you press the pedal for three seconds, uh, you're delivering, it's the same wattage, 45 watts, but for three seconds, you're delivering a lot more energy of 135 joules. And with that, the damage is going to be much more deep and extensive. As you can see here, the damage has gone to the muc from the mucosa to submucosa and even to the muscle. This is important because when we use APC for cecal angioectasias and we try to buzz. It looks good on the screen. You ablated the cecal angioectasia, but what you have not realized is the thin cecal wall of two millimeter uh, to three millimeters thickness cecal wall, especially when you distend the cecum and apply for three seconds, you're going to cause deep thermal injury and the patient may come back with post-polypectomy syndrome or even delayed perforation. 
So something to keep in mind when you're applying APC in the cecum. One way to avoid injuring the deeper wall is to limit the application time or to create a submucosal bleb and that submucosal saline bleb will uh, cushion and uh, limit the deep injury and in these cases the injury tends to be limited to the mucosa. So what I do is when I'm trying to treat a sacral angioectasia, it is my uh, game plan to inject either a little bit of uh, saline or a very dilute uh, epinephrine, one in 100,000 or 200,000 dilution of epinephrine into the sacral angioectasia and lift the angioectasia away from the wall and by using saline you create that cushion. If you use epi, dilute epi, then all the small vessels disappear and you just see the feeding vessels that you could target and uh, deliver APC. You don't have to deliver too much of APC so you lessen the damage and by that fluid cushion you further decrease the uh, injury to the deeper walls. Let us talk about the adverse effects of APC. Uh, before you apply APC, it is a good idea uh, as an endoscopist to deflate and suction whatever CO2 or air is in the colon because if you're pumping uh, APC at 0.8 or 1 or 2 liters per minute, that is that amount of gas doesn't get reabsorbed fast and the patients may have a lot of bloating when they recover uh, yeah, when they come to the recovery area. So first decompress before you're applying APC and as you're applying APC, get into the habit of constantly suctioning and removing the organ gas because organ gas does not get uh, reabsorbed uh, like the other gases of the gut. And if there is too much of uh, bloating, patients may have pain and if your catheter is very close to the mucosa, you could create emphysema uh, or, a, 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 or like an, uh, a nematocele type of uh, uh, effect. And perforation is a real possibility of APC, although we all learn that APC damage tends to be superficial. Uh, it's been shown in experimental uh, studies that APC damage could go deep as we've already uh, reviewed uh, and the perforation may not be obvious immediately but they can come back after two, three days when the deep thermal injury results in the breakdown of the wall and cause delayed perforation. And these patients may not realize that they have perforation, they may have a little bit of pain and if uh, they call the endoscopy unit, the endoscopy unit may not take that symptom seriously. And it's not uncommon for APC-related perforations to come in with fecal peritonitis because of ongoing soilage to that uh, hole. When you want to do uh, APC of radiation uh, telangiectasia, it is good to prepare those patients with a full uh, colonoscopy prep uh, to completely clear the entire colon of all the gases. Otherwise, if you start doing APC uh, for radiation telangiectasia or, or any other event without full colonoscopy prep, the, if a patient has uh, a methane in the colon, APC could precipitate a colon explosion which will be or can be fatal. So something to keep in mind. I hope this is useful. Thank you.